This video is about exact differentials as they apply to thermodynamics. It's not about solving exact differentials. It's merely about learning to recognize them and to apply them within the narrow field of thermodynamics, in particular a first semester course. In general, thermodynamics has state variables. Some examples of state variables are pressure, volume, temperature. Those are the three biggies, but then equally, equally so is energy, enthalpy, and entropy. Uh, often, these variables are related by a state equation. For example, PV equals NRT, state equation. And you can see that if you choose any two variables, pressure and temperature, or volume and temperature, or pressure and volume, that the other one is fixed by calculation. That means that in this particular equation, and in many state equations, there are only two independent variables. Consequently, these values, pressure, volume, and temperature, or whatever three state variables we're talking about, will graph as a surface. Think 3D. Let me show you an example here. Uh, this is a graph of pressure versus volume. Volume is on the x-axis right here, the red. Pressure is on the green axis, and the whole thing is laid on the real surface that it graphs into. Uh, it kind of looks saddle-shaped. Of course, you never see that because we are always dealing with real variables above zero in both the pressure and volume sense. And so it looks like this checkerboard yellow and pink piece right here. Uh, it, t uh, temperature, the third variable, is coming up from this grid. I can Maybe I can just move this about a little bit. You can see this grid that's here. And the, the height above the grid represents temperature. If we traverse the surface by some path from any state 1 to any state 2, in other words, any point on the yellow and on the checkerboard area, if we trace the path from any point to some other point, that particular path that we might follow is called a line integral. We may not know the equation that relates our variables, but we can know that there is both an initial and a final state. The initial state will be given by something like g initial is equal to g of xy, where xy are a couple of the variables such as p and v, uh, or, and then there can be a final state, g of f, and that would be like x plus some tiny change in x and y plus some tiny change in y. From a math viewpoint, we can write a total differential. So we can say dg is equal to the partial of g over partial of x dx plus partial of g over the partial of y dy. We'll call that equation 1. And from an experimental viewpoint, we observe the initial and final states g, i, and GF, the initial and final states. What we would like is for the initial and final state, or should I say the integral around the line integral, or the, the, the path of DG, to be equal to GF minus GI, which is equal to uh, G of XY minus G of X plus dx, y plus dy. But it's only true if dg, as defined in 1, is something called an exact differential, the topic of this video. What we're trying to do is extend the fundamental theorem of calculus to a, to a multivariable function, and in general, it fails. Although not rigorously stated, the fundamental theorem of calculus says something like the integral of the derivative of f from a to b is equal to f of b minus f of a. And for a multivariate function, this is simply sometimes not true. We can take the coefficients of 1 and put them into a vector. And we might get something like this. Okay, so the coefficient 
first coefficient there is the partial of g with respect to x. The second one is the partial of g with respect to y. Put them into a vector. And we notice that the vector is the gradient of some function g. There is a theorem which says if some function g exists such that its gradient can be written, as we've done here, then the fundamental theorem for a line integral or a path integral holds. So we can then say that this would be true, gf minus gi. Actually finding this function g might be obvious or not, but knowing if it exists, which is the key to being able to use this theorem, knowing that g exists is a little bit easier, and that is the topic of an exact differential. So now let's summarize. In general, if we are measuring something, and we know that it's a function of some independent variable, such that the changes in these variables can be written as a total differential, then the coefficients of that differential compose the gradient of some function then the fundamental theorem of calculus for a line integral that's multivariable will hold. In other words, if the differential is exact, then the integral only depends on the initial and final states and not on the path that got us there. But how do we know if the differential is exact? Suppose we start out with this differential equation. We have m of xy m of xy dx plus n of xy dy is equal to 0. It's a real d right there. Okay, if we can find g of xy such that the partial of g with respect to x is equal to m of xy and the partial of g with respect to y is equal to n of xy, then dg, dg will be a total derivative, a total derivative, and will equal to 0, because the problem was equal to 0, and g of xy will be a constant. That would be the general solution. Now, if the function g of x exists, then the equation is exact. If the function exists, the equation is exact. That's the definition of an exact differential. And finally, we have a test for exactness called the cross-derivative test. Cross-derivative test. And the way it works, it's really very easy. You look at the partial of m with respect to y and see if it's equal to the partial of n with respect to x. If true, then exact. All right, so let's do an example. Okay, we'll set up an example. Uh, here we go, 37y minus 5 dx plus 37x plus 3y squared dy equals dg. Uh, is it exact? Well, we can simply apply the test pretty easy. m is going to be, or should I say, you know, m, m is going to be 37y minus 5, and n is going to be 37x plus 3y squared. So then to do the cross product, cross derivative test, partial of m with respect to y will be simply 37, and partial of n with respect to x will simply be 37. 37 equals it. So yes, it's exact. Yes, it's exact. 
Okay, so what did that tell us? Well, it tells us that the integral, the line integral, dg, is equal to simply g of f minus g of i. It does not tell us g, not tell what function is g. Now, it may or may not be difficult to find g. It probably won't be if it's exact, but that's really the subject of a different video and not a video in thermodynamics. Okay, I hope you understand this well enough to pass thermo. Thanks.